Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of ENF TV. Uh, today, we are continuing our well-being series with my amazing co-host, Sally Richards, who is the Managing Director at Raspberry Sky. Sally, how are you? I'm really well, thank you. The sun is shining, spring has arrived, and we're all feeling really positive and a bit of outside pub lunches. So I think we're all good. Definitely, definitely. And I've got to say, I cannot tell you how much I've been looking forward to this uh, instalment. Um, with all the conversations that we've been having more recently, I, this is this is going to be something I'm really going to be getting into. So I'm ready to get knees deep. So yeah, please do. If you want to take it away, Sally, and uh, introduce our amazing guest, go ahead. <laughs> So Claudia Roth um, is, I would like to think a friend and a, an ex-colleague um, of mine. Claudia and I met, I was thinking about it earlier, it's over 20 years ago, Claudia, when we were both working at UTEL. Uh, Claudia was the general manager, I think, of Germany or Central Europe at that time, a real go-getter. Um, and when she left UTEL, she was the face of leading hotels of the world um, for Europe which entailed her, I think, getting on lots of aeroplanes, staying in five-star hotels, suited and booted, always the busiest lady at an ITB or a well-travel market, um, a real force to be reckoned with. And then several years ago, oh, not so, a couple of years ago, actually, because um, 2020 was a no-go, Claudia and I met for lunch and had a bit of a chat. I'd seen some sort of different things that she was doing and was really interested um, to find out more. So um, we are going to explore more about uh, Claudia Roth 2.0 or 3.5. <laughs> but and we will talk a bit about your background and things in a minute. But one of the stories I've heard you uh, talk about when you're doing some of your um, plenary sessions at your uh, Soul Luxury conferences is your uh, what I call your light bulb moment. Um, and the Blackberry story. So could you share with everybody uh, that, that little story? That would be great. And welcome, Claudia. <laughs> so, thank you for hosting me, uh, Tom and Sally. It's um, a joy, actually, Sally, especially as we connected in a completely different reality. Um, and now, you know, a couple of years on, well, um, life has totally changed. And yes, um, the Blackberry story was a, a defining moment, one of many defining moments. Um, I was traveling, I was working for leading hotels of the world as VP for Europe, Middle East and Africa. And my life was literally um, on the plane and in hotels and um, in very, very special hotels. I arrived at um, the Ritz and um, I was led up to my room. It, of course, it was not a room, it was a suite with my own sauna. Um, here I was um, checking in late, of course, um, and um, I went to um, sleep and uh, the next morning I walked to the, to the bathroom. To, it's beautiful, actually, it's a huge bathroom, you know, beautiful, two big mirrors and on the right hand side was a, was a window and the sun was coming in and I walked into the room and all what I could see is this big mirror and my face reflecting but a face which was um, full and deeply um, hurt with an imprint of my Blackberry and it made me realize <laughs> that I was I didn't even know I was crazy at the time because I was so ingrained in my work it was a 24 7 job because of you know managing hotels in different time zones i mean it was just it was now looking back i don't even i can't even i don't even know how i did it but i did it so i looked in the mirror i saw the blackberry imprint and <laughs> second I, I i was disoriented because i suddenly realized the world outside has changed but I, Claudia, was still in, in a world which was, at the time, not knowing it didn't serve me anymore as much as I thought I, it had because my career was, any, was everything I knew. I did not know anything else. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I was then really called to understand that the world has changed and I hadn't, but I did not know what it meant at the time. It was kind of a symbolization though, wasn't it? That your work had become you, you know, this keyboard imprinted into the side of your face because you'd been working, fallen asleep, and then literally, you know, the keypad on your cheek. And it is kind of that, you know, what am I? Who am I? I've yeah. become I've become the the, yeah. the crazy keyboard and and uh, it's, workaholic. It's, yeah, a symbol of um, actually um, not knowing who you truly are because you know your work defines you. And what was really strange is that this busyness, this sort of twenty four seven, always being available and literally falling asleep um, on the lap uh, on the blackberry um you don't when you are in this sort of um race so to say against yourself this is the interesting thing um you can't even step out because you don't know anything else and you don't think you have the time exactly of course you don't have time because having no time is part of your story you tell yourself yeah Yeah. i was gonna say that that sort of light bulb moment then so how fast was the uh need for exp- you know explanation or exploration you know was it instant did you just sort of say right i need to make a change or was it then gradual because you were still competing you know you had two mindsets now i suppose this sort of exploration of a new reality as you put it and then obviously your corporate work whole life reality so how quick was that journey or transition um, that's a very good question, um, Tom. You know, in terms of time, it takes time because your mind, you are so fixed in your identity. Mm. It's almost like, you know, you're wearing another, you're a different person, a, a different person. So it takes time to dismantle your self-image. And that's what happened to me. And the, you know, the difficulty for me, because I'm very stubborn and I'm very focused and I'm very, I don't give in, which are all fantastic traits to create a career. All my traits help me to create an incredible um, career um, being on in top of our industry. But equally, these trades held me prison in my own yeah luxury world because yeah. you don't give in. No, Claudia, I don't give in. You continue, okay? You continue. So um, you actually, before I could take further steps along that other journey, I actually help help myself back with reinforcing the beliefs don't give in don't give up and all of this so um it took quite some time um Mm. tom and there is a lot of there's an actual story i used i then went on a journey to live two worlds i lived the business world yeah and i lived my new world and gradually exploring and for years my colleagues would not know, nobody would know that I would la- would be living these two right. lives. Right. Yeah. Was that a difficult thing to deal with from a mindset perspective? Because of course, you know, it, I know this might not have happened like this, but say at the weekends, you were the Claudia you wanted to be. And then at the weekdays, Monday to Friday, you were the Claudia that you had to be, or you felt that you had to be at the time. Was that the sort of situation? And how did you deal with that from a mental perspective, mental health? Uh, it's a very good question, and Tommy, that, that was exactly it. I lived two lives, almost parallel and yet not parallel. So, for example, in, when I would come home from a, a week's, for a typical week traveling on a Friday evening, mm-hmm. I came here, and all what I would do is run to um, my bedroom and take off all my clothes, all the jewelry, which actually, you know, the pearl necklace, so it symbolized your exactly. yeah. my, my my life, my status, and I would put on my you know tracksuit. Within twenty minutes, I would jump in my car and I would go to a local Buddhist temple, 
Wow. Every evening at 7.30, um, they gather for um, satsang, for meditation. And I would sit there and I was the most happiest of women. I mean, wow. it was like um, I was so the peace, the calm. That's I was looking for that. Um, so I would spend every free minute, literally, mm -hmm. in the Buddhist temple, not knowing really what um what why i was there um because i was not in the in the buddhist um you know teachings but i was just seeking refuge in peace yeah. because my mind couldn't cope with this constant you know friction and then sunday evening came yes claudia had to pack her suitcase again and i remember so many sunday evenings i would be at heathrow um and I would be sitting um, in the lounge and literally I was crying. I was crying. Why do I do this to myself? And I couldn't understand it. But then what was fascinating, the moment on a, um, I would be next to uh, be in the business again, see a client, that suit I had put on was, was there again. And I was da, 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 and I loved it. So the discrepancy the duality I left was extremely exhausting. I did not know that, of course. No. Of course. Did you, you had your journey to Oroville, didn't you, which is your, your background. Yep. And I remember, I remember seeing that you, you'd gone there and I was thinking, I don't even know what, what that is or where that is. And I remember you saying, come, come. I was like, no, no. <laughs> And then I remember, and I remember this very fondly, Claudia, and actually I think it came up on a Facebook or something fairly recently, was Claudia dressed casually, never seen before in my life, and uh, riding for the very first time a cracked out moped. Yeah, and not just a moped, some <laughs> like really archaic moped. And her going, oh, I'm not so sure, I'm not so Vroom! And, sure. <laughs> and, and I remember thinking, God, what fun and, out <laughs> yeah. and a dirt track road and a you know and just a complete uh removal mm. from everything I'd ever known about you seen you know everything was completely polar opposite yeah. and I think when you went to Oroville did you go you didn't go with the you didn't go searching for something you went for some other reason and then it kind of started to itch away at you in yeah. terms of what you had explored or planted the seed. Tell us a bit about that. That's actually um, another interesting story. I need to take you back a little bit further. Um, when I was working at Leading Hotels of the World, we have annual conventions. And annual conventions mean that all our hoteliers from around the world come together. And one of these annual conventions was in Delhi. Um, Okay. And that was, I mean, incredible, you know, meeting the Dalai Lama. And I mean, it was, and you know, as we all know, the Indian hospitality is amazing. Mm. But I wanted to take this opportunity to do a little bit of traveling around India because at the time I had not, I had not been there. So little did I know that India was much bigger than my mind allowed me to think. Um, and a very good client of mine who run um uh, run tash hotels here uh, for europe he set me up on an, on an itinerary and he sent me to the south of india to a place called pondicherry i had no idea why i was going but i didn't have time to even research why i was going so i thought to myself okay i trust my client there is a reason why i why i have to go there so i went there flying to chennai taking a car for three hours. I had no idea what, what I was doing. So um, the next day, um, he even set up an appointment for me and I thought, okay, Claudia is going to sell luxury hotel. Okay. Um, that's the only thing I knew at the time. I um, turned up to this appointment and a man was sitting opposite me, dressed in white and very serene environment. And here I was coming with my red nails and my lipsticks and my um, work um, suit and I thought hmm, this is a little bit different atmosphere and I couldn't quite work it out there was a big picture of somebody something it was all very different and he sat in front of me and with a beautiful calm voice he looked at me smiled at me and that's not the typical you know business setting 
well, which I thought is not a typical business setting. And then he said to me, um, what is your purpose in life? And I thought, this is not a business meeting. <laughs> uh, I thought, uh, uh, I was like totally thrilled. Oh, amazing. I, I never, ever, you know, I'm never sort of um, uh, not knowing what to say, but I just, and I, you know, I can't believe it, but I said, I'm working and I'm paying a lot of tax. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only thing I could get out of my mouth. And, <laughs> I'm working and I'm paying a lot of tax. <laughs> I'm keeping and, the retail in business. <laughs> and he looked at me and he smiled, didn't say anything. Of course, I knew that this is not what he was um, <laughs> no. hoping to hear. But to cut a long story short, um, by the way, these questions are in, the, in, in my um, self-love journal, which we can talk about later. But the point here is that only later did I found out I was actually talking to the head of the Sri Aurobindo Ashram. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. So to come to your, to your questions, um, Sally, Sri Aurobindo Ashram has got a place which is called Aurobel, which is associated. It's, it's, right. it's associated. The purpose of Aurobel is, is for people who want to live their lives based on human unity. So it's a spiritual community. It's basically um, an incubator for um, practicing um, a life based on higher consciousness and I did not know anything this is me I like to explore um, and I wanted to write a book about um, business and spirituality and why I wanted to write a book about it I don't know but that was what I decided I think I should be doing and I thought okay I know a lot about business but I don't know anything about spirituality so to say a little bit but very little so I thought, okay, you know, in the tradition of um, finding solutions, because in business, that's how you're trained. So I right. thought, okay, why don't I um, <clears throat> ask whether somebody in Oroville can help me? Because I guess when you live there, you are the expert, so to say. So um, I decided to put an ad in their local um, no, uh, news and notes, which is their local news um, you know, channel and share that I'm, you know, European, blah, 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 and whether anybody would be interested to help me write a book. I mean, why I, I was now thinking about it, I was quite naive. Um, and actually, some people responded. And one in, man in particular um, called VJ, he said, I don't know anything about luxury, but I know a little bit about, you know, spirituality. So if you come please let me know and uh, we can meet. And so I did meet this man. This man is living in the deep forest of Oroville. I was sitting in the back of the car of, um, uh, of, uh, with my driver. Um, still, Sally, you won't believe it, high heels, wide <laughs> linen trousers, yeah, and monsoon, Claudia, was walking towards the house, which was not visible at first. She was she was really sinking into the dirt. I mean, what I was thinking at the time, I have no idea. Anyway, I arrived. It would have been a great sight for them seeing, <laughs> seeing you arrive, thinking, oh dear. Yeah. Exactly, I arrived. This man <laughs> opened his door. He said, welcome, welcome Claudia. Um, so um, we then, he took me to his balcony. I mean, beautiful, sitting in the, in the lush forest um, with the sound of the birds and it was beautiful. But I was very anxious because I never, never met this man. I was sitting in the, in, in the forest of a spiritual community. I mean, I couldn't <laughs> tell my husband um, because he was in England, so it wouldn't have helped any, anywhere. <laughs> I noticed that my the phone with a local SIM card didn't work in the forest. No. My driver had left for his lunch <laughs> break. I thought, what am I doing? Anyway, to continue the conversation, um, he was asking me a couple of very nice pleasantries, but very 
not so much being interested in myself as such because normally in a normal business or normal when you meet somebody you try to understand no um vj literally after <clears throat> some conversations and the tea <clears throat> excuse me he put a mirror in front of me and said who are you and i thought okay i don't know i certainly know the person who looks in the mirror right now and that helped me to understand that i'm made up of my self-image but mm. the self-image i put on because of my conditioning the way i was brought up working hard achieving being a good girl all these labels created that that self-image of that strong successful hungry businesswoman mm. um and I suddenly, when I looked in the mirror, I, I, I really understood that there is something else happening or what something else is actually pointing to who you truly are. But mm. I did not know what. And then my real journey started. That's, yeah. Started I was going to say, what, what, I suppose, what was that return to, to the UK like then? So you just experienced these very intense um almost interview like conversations you know really drilling down into very direct questions of what's your purpose who are you these aren't sort of questions that generally come up in first meetings um so you going back to you know the uk your again your corporate life and balancing the two do you feel that that was that sort of situation or those experiences then boosted your need then or necessity for exploration of where who you really were yeah. what your real purpose was and that sort of boosted that right absolute i mean by that time um i couldn't ignore my inner calling and then what happened was i developed an incredibly fear of flying now oh, wow. funny isn't it yeah because i it's very interesting you know i had to have so many signs from the outside to really um, um, have courage um, in myself and start my own exploration, yeah. Wow. Do you think but that, coming that, back, that was your that was your body telling you that you know that the, the lifestyle you had and the flying because you you flown. I mean, you were gold card everything. So um, your body just saying enough, you know, like I want change. It was it a sign of actually this isn't working for me and in, in a brutal way I, you know i have this fear of flying was that your body sort of just saying i've had enough yeah, but it was actually not the body because the body was very um active i do you know a lot of sports and i've always i mean traveling around the world i would only eat i mean people knew me grilled vegetables i mean i was you know super um aware of um, that I need to nourish my body well for it to cope with that intensity of, of the lifestyle. What was what the what the um, what was happening is that my higher self, my soul, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter, was mm. screaming for me to finally come to rest, to to actually acknowledge that right. you cannot continue like that. You wake up woman wake up claudia we want we we knock at your door so intensely hear me please you are meant to go on a different journey it's what well, it was that you know that knock from uh, you know you can call it intuition what you know this sort yeah. of feeling yeah. it's deep down you know that you shouldn't be doing something but you're continuing yeah. um and that was that knock yeah what's um what was that experience like? Because I can imagine that as a pretty difficult pill to swallow because, of course, you'd worked so incredibly hard to get to that point of being this jet setter, going into all these hotels and these amazing flights and everything else. And now all of a sudden, everything in your very being was saying, no, this is wrong. This is not the way things are supposed to be for you. I can't imagine that was an easy thing to go through again where you'd worked your whole career to get to that point and now you're at that point and now no it's not it's the wrong way to go what was that experience like 
you know tom you bring it to the point beautiful and that's exactly it was so painful mm. i can't even you know put it in words because it's a, it's an experience an emotional it's emotional pain which was so hard because you, you cannot get your head around it um you work so hard from young age onwards to mm. get to that point and now something which you are not even aware 100% or you are not even aware what that something is you don't have any understanding about spirituality and about um about go a soul guidance you don't know all this you are literally it's almost like you are driving yourself to a brick wall into a brick wall you yeah. don't i didn't understand anything anymore mm -hmm. i couldn't make sense because I was supposed to work hard and continue, you know, on this path, but yet I was literally being stopped, full blown. Yeah. I was, it was really painful, emotionally very painful. I can imagine. Mm. I can imagine. Um, and you in made terms a of, oh no, Sorry. go on. Yeah, no, 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 no go on, go on, please. And you made a decision at that point in time, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Claudia, to, to, to leave that. To leave that job and to take some time um to i guess find yourself a bit rebalance a bit and you know and just think well, well what 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 is it or what am i you know what do i want to be and um the, you know there's a lovely piece you talk around around this sort of whole self-love process as well and that that journey was well i think you'd prefer to say still on that journey but um, that, that's how that journey started for you, is just taking a bit of breathing space, right? You have, I mean, if you, it, um, it is extremely difficult to change your inner reality whilst you are rooted in mm. your day-to-day -day reality. Right. Because your day-to-day -day reality is reinforcing who you are. Yes, it's important. Um, and, and therefore, you, inverted commas, have to do the same thing, you know, your routine every day. And mm -hmm. you cannot change in whilst you are actually following your routine. It just doesn't, it, it's, it's, it's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you need to create space in your own awareness so that you can start bringing in different aspects, different thought processes. And whilst you do this, whilst you are reprogramming yourself on a, on a, on a really step by step, you are then starting to wanting to have more space in your awareness to let that new consciousness come in. So, you know, like, for example, as I said, um, the, um, my refuge in the in, in the in the Buddhist temple was just to give me a little breathing space, just to feel myself again. But nothing happened, nothing shifted because I would then go back to my old reality, and then I would reinforce my patterns again. Um, so only, and I knew that only if I really make a break, then I could actually maybe changed my life and something really interesting happened i stopped work and it was summer or early summer and i was sitting outside in our um in in our garden and i was typing on my laptop and i had my iphone or, or blackberry i can't remember next to me and for whatever reason i had to get up i lifted my laptop and my phone my no it was my blackberry my blackberry still from the from work fell into the water and we have a pond <laughs> um right. and i quickly put my laptop on the side because i didn't want to lose my laptop <laughs> and i fished out my blackberry at the time opened it you know cleaned the sim card etc hoping that i would um would recover my life mm. and it was kaput the blackberry didn't do anything i lost right. you know inverted commas all the data but you know but yeah. the, it was so symbolic claudia mm -hmm. that's it now yeah that the blackberry story is over it was fascinating it was really fascinating i was 
it hurt me, my life. It was literally like that, but that yes. had to happen. Yeah. 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 I was, was going to say about, um, I, I, again, within your, and I don't want to assume anything. So within your circles, within your family circle, your friendship circle, your corporate circle, your, your, you know, your colleagues and so on. Did, did they have anything to say in terms of, you know, this sudden sort of change in you, your sudden mindset change? Were they sort of, you know, did you find yourself competing in terms of you guys just don't understand? Or did you find yourself getting frustrated with others because they, they didn't sort of get it or they didn't understand where you were going, but you knew that you were on the right track, whereas others might have thought she's lost her marbles. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Was that, was that a situation? That you had to deal with whilst um whilst i was working i kept my other side very quiet i wouldn't say anything yeah. the uh, my my leadership team knew at 10 o'clock no matter where in the world i was no matter how important the dinner was i would go into my room because i had a conference call because you know when you work internationally you can have conference calls at any time but sure. of course it was not a conference call I needed to have my own time um, yeah. and do my meditation. So I was very aware, whilst I was very fragile on this journey of, of, of transformation, it's not good to talk about it because right. you are not rooted in that, new, um, in, that, in that new awareness. And whilst you are making baby steps, it's not, I felt it was not appropriate to actually talk about it on at least not with people who couldn't um share that um understanding so yeah. i kept quiet um tom for that reason right okay i would I, yeah. I would have friends i could share my interests so that's yeah. how i I'm, i divided that quite purposely mm. I, was, I was gonna say then so now you've I suppose established the road that you're on. You're you're in the journey at the moment, and yeah. obviously by no means anywhere near finishing that journey, of course, because none of us are. But I suppose if we put things into perspective now, in terms of success and what that meant to you back then, what did that mean to you back then? And now more importantly, what does success mean to you in this new reality for you? I have totally um, redefined success. Success in the corporate world was um, being recognized for my input, um, being recognized in terms of promotion, being recognized in terms of salary increase, a better car, mm. and da 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 da. Um, and that um, was very important to me because that was a way of, of, of recognition. Mm. In the world I'm now um, in, which is um, so much more, um, I mean, it's so much more joyful, actually. I have so much fun. It's, it's sometimes I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should not be so, um, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> joyful. Um, is I'm actually the, the success and the word success I don't even like anymore because it still has got that connotation from the old world. But what I now see as um, uh, success, if that's the word to use, is the peace of mind. So I now I'm really mindful with whom I engage. I, right. I will not um, or I avoid to engage with people who are so rooted in, 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 in that old success term because it doesn't work anymore. I don't, I, I passed it, you know, I, mm. I, I can see the illusions. Um, so success for me is, is really shifting my awareness day by day by day and seeing through the illusions. And, right. I, and, and that is opening up a completely different world of possibilities. It's unbelievable what we are missing when we are rooted in our own belief system, in, in, in our own um, mm. um, made, mind-made personality. It's limiting. 
it's literally limiting mm -hmm. because we are limiting ourselves to what we believe and a belief itself carries limitation so for me is is really stepping into that other space into that space beyond beliefs beyond illusions because that's where there is so much there's so many possibilities mm. and i think i think the other thing which um i think is important to say and and, and why i love claudia is because while she's taken a conscious choice to move away from this sort of highly commercial jet setty persona into the cloud we see now, you still operate a business. You mm. still, you know, it, you, you know, whilst uh, the the spiritual element, you know, you can go from one extreme to another, can't you? You know, you can be, you know, Mrs. Jet Setter, or you can be wearing no shoes, living in a forest and doing yin yangy stuff and not talking to people and whatever. And so we're not, I just want to, we're not talking these two extremes. We're talking no. maybe this extreme, mm. but you're, you're midway here because what you're, what you're saying is you've made choices now to, to, to find who you are. And we'll talk a bit about self-love in a minute and the big part that has to play on it. But I think what I love about what you've done is there's a lot of help you're giving to your community which I think is is lovely, and it's and it's, and it's how we've reengaged. But but equally, you are you you do have a commercial business called Soul Luxury that also blends the two together, and I think that's that's quite unique. I think. And yeah, and Sally, absolutely. I mean, I love business, and I I um, wouldn't want to miss um, that part at all because the change which is needed has to happen in business. Um, and I'm very dedicated to this. What I'm saying is that I am um, resonate or people resonate with me who, are, who understand that we need change. Yes. Um, yes. And that means, you know, like I run well-being sessions for corporate companies um, because we, we visionary leaders understand that there is something shifting yeah. um, and we can only shift by you know shifting ourselves first so my role which i become more and more aware and which i'm more and more able to um, honor is bringing these two worlds together yeah we don't need to live in an ashram and actually we you know we shouldn't um inverted commas because we all have a role to play here, you know, in, in the world. And we need business leaders who are seeing the need and understanding the need for change. And no better place to actually do it um, and, and working for this change in the business world. And that's where I come in. And that's, and that's from a business perspective, that's employee related and customer related Correct. Yeah? so it's that complete 360 Correct. Kind of element isn't it Correct. i think and i think that's why where actually cloudy you are unique in terms of your journey yeah you haven't thrown off your shoes and although you do sometimes you know like but you know you, you found that balance of being a happier person and but also still feeding that commercial piece will be slightly differently yeah. so um i think that yeah i think i think for me that's what resonates i think with me um yeah. can you can you talk us a bit about the whole self-love piece yeah. as well can you take the mystique out of that yeah that's that's another another thing um, Sally, when I look back, I have no idea how this all came about. Of course, I know, but you know, it's this one. How how does a woman who has been chatting around the world was very focused on her career and you know that life suddenly publish a book on self love? I mean, two words. <laughs> I mean, it's not quite talking of that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say exactly. talking of that. There you go. I mean, you know, even that. <laughs> I, I was going to say <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for that plug, thank you. <laughs> well, you know, when you are on this journey, 
you really, really ask yourself some questions and some hard questions because that's what it's all about. It's about self understanding. And what I now understand and learned is the, 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 the greatest gift we each can give to ourselves is to really understand our ourselves because we have to live with ourselves from the first breath to the last breath. Now, wouldn't we want to be interested in ourselves? I believe yes, and more people are awakening to this. Now, the first step to really start to become interested in, in one's own self is an opening towards self-love. And I don't mean it in, um, in this sort of like romantic love and all of that, no. It's a genuine, you could call it interest for your own self. And the moment we can, when, when we have, when we allow ourselves time and interest to really understand ourselves, we are giving our, ourselves a gift and that is a gift of self love. That's all mm -hmm. what it is. And, um, this journal, I always wanted to write a journal. Um, came through um, through me. I didn't sort of sit there and say, I want to do it. It started off with, I do morning reflections. I write every morning and I wrote about different things, etc. And then I had all this sort of content and I thought, that's exactly what it is. It's all about self-love. And then I mm -hmm. created a journey from my various writings and I decided to publish it. And so that's self-love and I'm working on the next one is about um, self-empowerment now. So um, I enjoy... Um, sharing as well. Yes. It's about yeah. sharing yeah. techniques. And I think a journal yeah. is, is, uh, is a great way of doing that because it provides a sort of framework, but you can free flow yes. you know, through it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've and done then, some journals and I, and I, and I do times when I, I think, like, and I think we talked about this earlier, as you get older, you, you become less strict on yourself. So I might do, I have a journal next to the bed yeah. and some days I fill it out every morning in reflections. And then I may go through three, four weeks and I'm not even picked yeah. it up. And then I pick it up again. And I think the thing is, it's, uh, it's not beating yourself up about whether, you know, you don't have to, no. you, don't, you have to do, and I think this is uh, maybe as you get older as well, you, you feel more relaxed feeling how you're feeling, being how you're being, mm. and actually you, you're, you're willing to, to flow with how yeah. you feel. And there isn't a right and a wrong and a, you know. It's, it's, it's one of these things as well. We've obviously spoken uh, a couple of weeks ago prior to this. And I think it's, it's sort of one of these things where we are all, on our own journeys. I, I spoke to you both about my journey with self-love and that coming from quite a dramatic part of my life that really steered me onto a certain path. And I think it's one of these things where, you know, there's an element of, you're right, age, but maturity, life experience, things that change you fundamentally from a mindset perspective. Because of course, I think with, with my sort of I suppose, angle on self-love. It's been the, the sort of a less reliance on validation from others and acceptance from others. And ultimately, I suppose, love from others. Whereas the interest, as you so rightly said, is on myself. Where am I heading? Am I heading in the right direction for me? Ultimately, why am I heading into that direction? What, what does that ultimately mean? What, what, what does that mean for me as a person, as, a, as my health, as my mental health? And, and what does that mean for my future and my family's future and so on and so forth? And it's those bigger, wider visions or understandings or need for ex exploration that maybe when we are younger with left li less life experience, where everything is very granular, everything's very just transactional. I need that, so I need to do this. I you know I want mum to buy me that, so I can do this, right? I need a laptop, so I can do this. Whereas I think when you get to that certain point where your mindset has changed, your need for granular things is a lot less it's more of the the open picture where do I want to be and why do I want to be there and that was a big thing for me because my lifestyle my mindset my um I suppose my 
it's obviously relative, but my need for success or what success meant to me massively changed due to self-love. And I don't, there's one of these things where I'm in a culture in my sort of generation, if you like, where you see so much online, you, you know, on, on social media and things where there's this aesthetic facade of self-love, you know, mm. you use the right vocabulary, you wear the right clothes, you say the right things and all of a sudden you're spiritual. Whereas something <laughs> with you two that I've massively respected and really invested in was that you've, you are living it. We are, well, three of us are living it, but we don't need to have this certain vocabulary to say that we're spiritual. We don't need to wear a certain Hessian clothes because it's, it's what everyone else does. Or we don't need to, to post that we're burning sage today because that's what we do. It, it's, it's this thing of this certain transcendence of, I am actually in a period or a journey of self-love. And I don't need other people to know that because mm. I fundamentally know that. Is that is that fair? Because that's that's something that I've just been racking in my brain for not even months. This has been years. And I just don't know what your take is on that. I, I so agree. The moment you are rooted in yourself, there is no need to share um, what you were just saying. You know, I'm saging my place right now because mm. it's part of you. I don't go out and say what I do as part of my ritual because that's my life. That is yeah. how I do it. It's part of honoring myself. And I don't need others to necessarily know that. Um, yeah. So I totally agree. And if you really um, think about it, you know, those to put a label on yourself, your spiritual, that to, to, to me tells me a lot that maybe the person isn't yeah. because you know, they want the badge but they don't badge. necessarily uh, believe, no, yeah. you know yeah. they know i'm spiritual we are all we are all um and the more we we have to say it the less we most likely are it because it's just i would feel totally um inadequate to even say that because mm. You know, it's just a, a path I choose. Yeah. I choose a path of higher consciousness. Um, but that doesn't mean anything. And it does that. And in fact, it doesn't need to mean anything to anybody. It's my mm. journey. We all have, as you say, we all have our, our own individual journeys. Um, and I think this is the difficulty right now. This word spiritual has become highly, you know, popular. Mm. um it's it's, yeah. it's it's everybody wants to um be enlightened or whatever mm. yeah. <laughs> the terms are and what i found is that there are a lot of um you know teachers out there now and it's it's a bit of um it's a bit chaotic out there um mm. but when we are really deeply rooted within ourselves and when we feel into our heart we know who is the true teacher for us we will sure. find it um, so there is, but there is a little bit of work to be done to really connect with yourself, to know that you are not being, um, let down a wrong path. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I, think, I think the pandemic has made people think differently from all age groups. And mm. I think, you know, whilst, uh, people have perhaps been furloughed or more time at home, I think certainly for me anyway, I still yearn space. And I still <laughs> yearn my own space and time. So, you know, I am always one for escaping somewhere, either in the house or outside, just to take time. And it may be just go and lie on the bed and relax or read a book or whatever. Um, but I, I do find um, what helps me if I, I, I find I don't get as stressed actually as I used to. I'm not as manic as I used to because I don't want to be. I don't yeah. want to live that go, 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 go kind of lifestyle. Um, so I'm happy to have the more space. But equally, and Claudia introduced this to me and I'd like to share, is, um, you know, this uh, remote uh, quantum field where twice a week uh, we meet as a group virtually and um, Claudia introduced me to the Wim Hof breathing, 
Um, and I find, you know, I find the Wim Hof breathing amazing, actually, because um, I, I don't know what it is about it. And I'm really into the cold showers as well. Well, I do it every day. Um, but I find actually when I do take the time and I'm not great at it. And sometimes I don't do it for a couple of weeks and then I then I'll do it for three nights in a week or however, when I feel like it, mm. I feel so much more centered. I right. just feel like I've I'm, I, I'm more balanced. I'm more open. I'm just, I'm just more me. I feel more connected to me mm. and with the meditation. So on the other, there's two a week and on the second one in the week is meditation. I do struggle with that sometimes. And it really is down to my mindset when I do it, how deep and how relaxing I find it. Cause sometimes I do it and I've just fallen asleep straight after and I'm just gone. Yeah, which is why you do it at nine o'clock at night. I will quite often do it at half nine, quarter to ten, get ready for bed, do my meditation, and then just continue sleeping yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Other times I lie down to do it and I just can't. I just fidget. Yeah. Oh, how much? It's only 20 minutes. I'm like, 17 minutes. I'm not sure. <laughs> how much longer is it going to go on for? And you just think, actually, that's okay too, because yeah. it doesn't matter. The, the fact is, you've taken the time, mm. to give it a go. Today is not a good day. And that's, that's, that's okay. And I think mm. through the pandemic, and I know, you know, quite often everybody's looking for solutions and help. Those kind of things really do help. You know, and Tom, you've yeah. been doing a bit of that, you know, since we spoke about, yeah. you know, the Wim Hof, yeah. and the breathing, yeah. the cold and the meditation and stuff. And it, yeah. it, it does help. It really does help. Do you know what? It's one of these things where um, my, my, my partner is a huge part of my, journey into this sort of space because she's um incredibly open-minded but she's also very much she's actually very much like you sally where she loves being out of the house so anything that we do it's usually and this is me being completely open and transparent it's usually me going okay well let's give it a go and we'll see how we get on and i can hear me <laughs> saying it but every time we're in the car the music's on the windows are down the roof's off or whatever and I'm immediately in a space where I feel so happy and comfortable and content. Yeah. And it's not the fact that I'm doing it with her. It's the fact that I'm allowing myself to do it. You know, it's, it's one of those things where I'm just kind of going, shut up, Tom, just do it and stop overthinking it. Stop being like an idiot. Voice, about it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and I, I actually text you. I remember texting you on the day I did it or when I was doing it. But I was like, oh, my God, Sally, look at this. And I text you a picture of this incredible um, river, water, like a, yeah. river that was going over a waterfall. And we were doing the Wim Hof breathing exercise together, holding hands. And we were listening to the roar of this of this water. And it was just the most exhilarating situation. But at the same time as it being exhilarating, I opened my eyes and I felt so at ease and so mm -hmm. nothing really mattered. It was just a beautiful thing. And, and you're right. It's, it's been one of these things where I have, I've been on a massive education hype, I think, where I just want to learn. I want to listen. I want to understand. And if, sometimes I'm not going to get things or sometimes I'm just not going to gel with that area. But I think, again, as you said, I think that's okay. That's, that's okay. That's, that's just you. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so I am, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I'm living it. And, but I'm not living it for the grace of others. I'm, I'm just doing it for myself. And if I do text you, that's cool. But if I, you know, I'm not going to be sort of going after everybody going, you know, on my Instagram page or my LinkedIn going, hi, guys, <laughs> just did the Wim Hof exercise at this amazing place why don't you try it because it will change your life and I'm like <laughs> no I've just done it I know I've done it my partner knows I've done it and I've gone home and I felt great about it and it's it's those sorts of situations where as I say that aesthetic facade where once you live it and you're living it for you and all the right reasons everything else just falls into insignificance it doesn't matter anymore that self-acceptance is everything mm -hmm. and Tom what you were sharing you know or, or Sally this these moments of deep peace it's pleasant yeah. yeah and that's when we are truly connected mm. to who we truly are and mm. that peace is always available to us yeah but we, have to, we have to inverted commas i say this purposely work towards it 
Because yeah. what's happening is our our conditioned self comes in and says, I have no time or mm. not now or yeah. I whatever the whatever the chatter is, our conditioned self is that ego part in us which actually wants us to stay in yes. our prison. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. that's why sometimes it's important just to say, okay, I hear you, I'm now doing my meditation. I hear you, I'm now doing my Wim Hof breathing. Mm. Um, sometimes it's important because the ego is wanting to keep us in our little space. Yeah. And one of the other things you taught me, um, but you, you didn't talk, teach me, I, I saw you doing it one time at one of the workshops was when you meditate, you hold a crystal, like so some, you hold something in your hand, something you love, you cherish, it feels nice, it feels right. And when you do that, it connects you to that moment. And you almost like your brain goes, your body goes, yeah, this is, this is that me time to, to to slow down and, and it's, it's almost like a subliminal message of yeah you know and I have to say yeah. <laughs> I have one next to my bed and when I when I want to meditate I, I will pick it up and just just hold it yeah. and it, it it sends that message to almost to your to your to your mind to say it's about me it's about self-love it's about being in the moment and it's about slowing down and it just mm -hmm. I think those kind of things really help we, we do need, in the beginning of the path, we do need... Like a trigger. Triggers. We do need our own reminders um, because it's easy to forget it because that conditioning is so strong. We are literally, you know, I always think, like if you imagine a big tanker, um, you know, a big ship on the open ocean, you know, until it, it changes um, direction, it, it takes time. It always, you know, it's like, oh my God, another bit, another bit. And that's with our own personality. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. we have put something on ourselves for the 30, 40, 50 years. Now mm -hmm. to shift suddenly, it wouldn't be, it's, it's, impo it's, it's actually wouldn't be good because it would be very disoriented or disorientating for us. We yeah. do need time also for our body to, to follow us. So, you know, we need to understand that we are, body, mind and spirit has to be in alignment. And I noticed that I've done a lot of spiritual um, inner work and I suddenly realized, oh my God, I now need to actually help my body to follow, um, to, 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 um, to actually come along with it. So yeah. I got really into um, Kundalini yoga. And also that's when I started the, the, the breathing because I got a deeper relationship with my with my body as well, um, you know, to release a lot of toxins. So there is this, you know, and we all have our own journey, and we mm. need we want to take interest to explore it. Yeah. What um, what was the moment that you, I suppose, identified that you weren't loving yourself in terms of you know this self love sort of piece, if you like. And then how do you feel now you've made that transition and ultimately how's that changed your life as a whole? You know, your relationship with yourself, with your body, with your mind, but also with your friends, with your family, everybody around you, how has that affected you? Um, whether that be in a negative or a positive, when, when, when was it that you first realized you weren't doing it and now you are, what's changed? I mean, um, First of all, it is work in progress. You know, there are mm. little steps, little steps, little steps. Um, I, because I'm much more rooted and happier in myself, I can see how that is being reflected um, by people who come into my life. Um, yeah. And it's, it's wonderful because what really is happening and it's law and, and, and uh, uh, cause and effect, Whatever is happening um, inside us, whatever state we are, that's what we attract. So the moment we are, you know, detoxing our, how we think, our emotional state, then we allow new situations to come into, um, my life, mm. uh, into our lives in alignment with that higher vibration. So for me, I mean, it's amazing how everything is shifting and how 
people come into my life without asking, but mm. of that higher, you know, vibration with new opportunities. It's like, wow. I mean, oh, really? <laughs> um, because it's 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 the moment we are um, in that state of acceptance. But it's even more than acceptance, because love is is in, in is the highest vibration. Mm. So we attract, um, yeah, beautiful situations, people into into our lives. We can mm. only attract that what we send out. That's that's yeah. really yes. what it is. Yeah. That's why emotional work. I mean, this mental um detox and actually i run a course um mental and emotional detox um is so profound because you know we can only um it's like like when you know in, in springtime we tend to clean out our wardrobes you know we tend to make space for you know get rid of something so that we can have space for new things we do this automatically in the house you know we do this mm. with the drawers we do this as part of our you know the way we live but we never considered doing it actually with our own thoughts yeah. and emotions. We just keep on repeating the same thing. So no wonder, whilst we want a different life, whilst we want to be more healthy and more happy, but yet we are not actually cleansing from within. Um, so um, it's it's because I'm really keep sort of I'm, I'm really working through, um, yeah, things which are obsolete now beliefs yeah. which are obsolete so new new beliefs are coming and new situations coming to my life so you can replace those you can get rid of the old and replace with the new and exactly amazing, isn't it <laughs> exactly i was going to say and, as well as your your mind is ultimately everything you know it it will determine whether you get up in the morning it will determine how you feel how you respond how you react to certain situations your your mind is probably the most important thing your it's that old question i i don't know if i got it from a movie or from something i watched once but there was somebody that was breaking down who you are is it your is it your clothes? Is it your hands? Is it your body? Is it your neck? Is it, you know, is it your hair? And as soon as you started realizing that I'm not actually my hand, if my hand got cut off, I would still be me. If my torso got taken away for whatever reason, but that's not me. This, this is just skin, bone, organs. And it's one of those things where it's, if you're not taking care of fundamentally who you are, which is whatever this is, mm. You're, you're already you're not you're not focused on what ultimately is going to make you happy and it, you are the one who's going to make you happy you said that pretty much at the start you know you live with you from the moment you take your first breath to the end and i suppose that self-love bit is is getting increasingly more difficult um in the society that we live in from a young person's perspective anyway because everything is built on others acceptance and others validation right that's that's our whole lives this is what i'm doing today look how great this is don't you love this and you're looking for likes and you're looking for follows and you're looking for all this stuff mm -hmm. when in fact if you fundamentally started with yourself and then projected that out as you said you would then get in response the the effect that you want to to get right that's that's ultimately what that is exactly it's it's really from the inside out rather than from the yeah. outside lights in yeah because yeah. the outside coming inside is actually only reaffirming mm. the level of awareness we are yes so we can't yeah. change so we really have to start from within and it's such a shame they don't teach this sort of thing at school isn't it no. they, you know that you have to pick this up on your journey yeah. as you mature and mm. you, you know like you know, if this kind of education or help or, you know, way of being was mm. part of, you know, your school life, yes. gosh, what a, what a, what a difference uh, an adult human being would be, you know, if you learned yeah. this earlier, earlier in your life, you know, yeah. so, and I think that's part of the sharing, isn't it? That's exactly. Why. But I mean, you know, a conversation yeah. like we have, you know, two years ago, that wouldn't be possible. People wouldn't no, to, yeah. to listen. Now, um, uh, now 
people actually are open for a mm -hmm. conversation and you know you are not being sort of um look stupid when you actually talk about purpose um mm -hmm. or you know the bigger question of who i am or whatever i do a lot of different um workshops and the the demand and the interest now is increasing is increasing because i people are awakening to mm. um the truth they're awakening to the fact that yes there is something more than i tell myself mm. um and how can i do it how can i you know how does it work mm. um i mean i was very lucky on my journey i had i had some really profound teachers and very um, sincere teachers. So they helped me along my path and I um, would like to do what I can to give, you know, to, to, for those who seek um, their own inner wisdom. I really mm -hmm. come from a place, we all have it inside us. You know, like, like you said, Tom, you're doing the, the breathing and you have this bliss. It's always there, we all have it. We just mm. have to connect to it and discover it and own it. It's starting yeah. to own it and be in that consciousness. Well, I suppose Sally made a really good point and something that I massively agree with actually is that education is not going to young people. Unfortunately, young people are seeing from a younger and younger age, uh, the powers of media and social media, You know, your online influencers, your your people that get celebrated for doing all the wrong things and, and they are chasing all that external validation. Um, I suppose, Claudia, what, what advice would you have given to your younger self? So your younger self back in your, you know, other reality that was, and ultimately what advice would you give to other young people out there that are struggling with their mental health, their self-confidence, and maybe not on the, the journey to self-love just yet but they're trying to find their feet what what advice would you give to them i mean for me um, first starting with the first question my advice um to claudia don't procrastinate step into your own have courage to be who you are mm. um that's my advice to myself um it took me a long time to understand that to really yeah. have the courage to be myself. Um, and for the younger generation, um, it is, I recognize it is difficult because obviously um, social media is built to reinforce, you know, yeah. our personality. And it's, a, it, it's an illusionary trap. Um, yes. To get out of that, the only way is in. Because otherwise you don't see yeah. it. You don't. Ex yeah. you, you cannot. You you, you cannot see um, the trap you are in. So the yeah. only way is in. So you know, having these conversations and Tom, you know, in your you you in you can influence your generation. Mm. We can influence our generation by parents. You know, having conversations with their um, uh, children. It all starts with a conversation. Yeah. Um, and I think this is our responsibility to talk about it, to help others to just maybe have that, uh, okay, I get it, I understand. And, you know, um, that's all what we can do because everybody is responsible for their own reality. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, yeah, it's just something that's been ticking around in my mind for such a long time is that sort of, uh, unfortunate negative um, sort of uh, result of this social media age where everything is um, so out there. And if you're not um, sort of towing the line or looking like everybody else or doing what everybody else is doing, um, you're, you're not, the, you're not part of the club. You're not. You're not in. So yeah. it's it's one of those things. But it's a measure yeah, of it was an follows and likes and you know. This is it. You know, this it's, is it. And uh, it's a sad thing. Um, but no, I, I, Sally, I don't know if, you, if you've got any other questions for Claudio. I'm just conscious that we've, we've gone over the time that we were, we were looking at, but it's, uh, I've just enjoyed it so much. And I've actually feel very sort of calm and relaxed right now, actually. So 
yeah it's been a it's I, been an amazing I can, experience i can feel a, a table for three pub garden nice lunch yeah. coming yeah up. me too oh, i think that would be nice that yeah would be definitely very nice, and we won't bring any cameras or anything we'll just do it <laughs> yeah, no. we, we, we go on clubhouse yeah, yeah exactly oh. that <laughs> oh. <laughs> take time take time oh, yeah. yeah but uh claudia really really appreciate you you giving yeah. up time um to talk to us we've covered a lot of great subjects and uh yeah um friendship is key as they yeah. say and exactly. uh, i'm sharing you know and sharing as you sharing said. is caring Sharing is Indeed caring. it is. Sharing, sharing is caring. So Indeed it is. Thank um, you so much. And that's a big thank you from me as well, because um, being introduced to you when we first jumped on our first Zoom, I remember sort of going into a lot of, it felt like a therapy session. And I, I remember saying at the end, I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> but it, it's just been such a, I don't use this word that often actually, but it's, it's actually been quite a beautiful thing. And I hope you know Sally and I with this well-being series it's all been about bringing that human element um into the world of hospitality right now because it has been so difficult and I th I'm hoping that people will we'll be able to build a little community of our own where there is dialogue being built up and and people are on their journeys and we're able to maybe offer a bit of subliminal um support there I suppose you know with mm -hmm. conversations like this happening as you said two years ago this wouldn't have happened and it's kind of sad thinking about that but the fact that we're here is awesome so um yeah. I just want to say a huge thank you for me as well yeah oh thank thank you Sally thank you Tom I, as it's really um I was looking forward to our conversation and uh yeah. uh yeah it's been cool it's been really cool and Sally what what an awesome episode you're awesome <laughs> and yeah guys I what I will do <laughs> what i'll do is i will put a link to where you can buy this book in the description below i'll leave claudia's details below as well because i know claudia would love to hear from anybody that would like to hear more and understand more about their journey and how they can mm. can look at that and of course any visionary leaders i think um claudia sort of said which is a really good way of putting it uh want to understand how they can support their people but also understand how they can be more open-minded towards this area of the market I know Claudia would love to hear from you. So I'll put her details below. Um, again, thank you so much. And guys, thank you so much for getting through. If you sort of joined us all the way up until this point, yeah. you might be <laughs> listening to us while we're doing your washing up or doing jobs around the house or whatever it might be. Uh, but we really do hope you've enjoyed it. And don't forget to check ours out on the next episode. So thank you so much. And look who's on next week's episode. 